What's the word, y'all? Adrian Griffin just got fired. The last 24 hours in the association. Do y'all do really think about how crazy the league that we follow is? We saw a person drop 70 points. Shout out to Joel B. We saw somebody else drop 62 and a, and a loss. Kevin Ray had 43 and a game winner. And now we see a head coach get fired while having a 30 and 13 record. And it's just... Interesting. I was surprised. And I, I not because I believe that Adrian Griffin had the job security of Eric Spolstra, because I didn't think that Adrian Griffin was doing a great job, but the timing of it is what surprised me. I mean, we're we're in the numbers on the board studio and it broke right right live on the show. And we're like, wait, there was no rumbling as far as we know that this was about to happen, and then boom, it happened. The 30 and 13 record, by the way. Again, circumstances are different, but I just want to put it on, on, on a different perspective. A 30 and 13 record is again the two seed in the Eastern Conference. And the leader right now for coach of the year is OKC. OKC's Mark Daytonall, who has a worse record by percentage. By percentage. So <laughs> our eventual maybe coach of the year might have a lower win percentage than this guy that just got fired. Now, again, uh, coaching and basketball is more than wins and losses. But again, 30 and 13? 30 and 13. Now, again, I do not believe that Adrian Griffin is doing a very great job. And 30 and 13 maybe is underperforming where you have Damian Lillard and Giannis. But it's just... You know, but even with that said, this is not the first time in recent history that we've seen a, a coach get fired while coaching a good team. David Blatt also had this happen to him uh, back in 2016, where he had a 30 and 11 record. Now, Adrian Griffin got two extra games now. He got two extra games, but um, he also got fired. And of course, Tyron Lue took over and they went on to win an NBA championship. So Bucks fans, history can repeat itself, I, I guess, but only time will tell. Now, the last two games for the Milwaukee Bucks have not been pretty. They Well, a lot of their wins have been pretty, and that's one of the reasons why Adrian Griffin got fired. But the last two specifically, you had back-to-back -back, uh, games against the Detroit Pistons. And in both of those games, these these are games. Okay, so the way I'm watching basketball right now halfway through the season, I am picking and choosing the games that I want to pay attention to. When I see Bucks versus Pistons on the docket, I don't care to watch that, right? But with four minutes left in both of these games, the Pistons are in it. So I switch over to see what the heck is going on. That's what happens. You let the Pistons hang around for two straight games. People start looking at each other like, I, I, don't, I don't know about so-and-so. And so-and-so -and -so right now, Adrian Griffin, just got fired. Um, this, the tenure of the 40-something games of Adrian Griffin as a head coach has not been pretty, right? It started off with Terry Stotts. Um, Terry Stotts was the was the, the lead assistant on the bench for his, his, this coach's staff. And eventually, before the season started, Terry Stotts said deuces. Now, there there was a report that there was an altercation between him and, and Adrian Griffin. Not like a physical tussle, but like a, an argument, so on and so forth. And it was enough for Terry Stotts, who had been around the association as a head coach, granted, for a very long time, to say, heck, this is not built for me. Now, some of us speculated that he was just so used to being a head coach. Not being a head coach was just too much to take in. Some people said that Adrian Griffin is moving a little bit differently for a guy with zero experience, right? So that happened. We thought it was weird, but we didn't think too much about it. Next thing, the team started off dreadfully defensively. And hell, they're still not good defensively right now. But the start of the season was even worse. And then it got to the point where the, the people around the team were like, hey, Adrian, this defensive scheme you got us running is dreadful. We want to run the thing that helped us win a championship just a few years back. Adrian Griffin said, you know what? Y'all are right. And then eventually we saw a lot more drop coverage from Brooke Lopez, and, and they've adapted that a little bit more, and their defense has got better. It's still not good, but it has got better since then. That's another thing. And then the next thing that I can think of on top of my head, that he had a very particular rotation that Damian Lillard Hate it. Dame said, I, I am struggling to get a rhythm because my entire time in Portland, my rotations were a certain way. I want to play all 12 minutes in the first quarter. That's the way I get my rhythm. And then Adrian Griffin said, you got it, Dame. You got it. So that's three different things just off the top of mind. I'm not I'm not deep into Bucks fandom. There might be more that y'all could comment down below. But there's three different things where people are looking at Adrian Griffin as a first year head coach said, bro, you're doing this wrong. And those are just the things that we know that he accepted the fact. Well, I don't know if he accepted the Terry Stotts thing, but we know that he was like, you know what, y'all are right. That don't tell us what's going on behind the scenes of a player or another coach on the staff saying, Adrian, we need to do this. He might be like, nope, that's not the way I want to do things. We only know what we really know. So they decided that this man was not the coach for them 
to win that championship. Because when you trade for Damian Lillard and you have Giannis, you have a top two player in all the basketball on your roster, there's no real room to figure it out, if that makes sense. And I honestly think this goes deeper than coaching. Um, I, I, I honestly do believe that with him being a first-time head coach, there are a lot of things that he didn't really anticipate. And keeping together a locker room and having a group of people behind you as a head coach is something that you can't i guess i guess you can't really look look past it and i don't know if this is the original tweet but this comes from ryan rude knew adrian griffin was gone when i saw Giannis drawing up plays on the bench last night i just yeah but that, I, this is obviously jokes and jokes and jokes but you know like stuff like that now th there's probably a broader conversation to be had about stuff like this that i'll probably go deeper into it when i have a full hour to talk like the candy beach podcast links is in the description about players players the star players of an organization like Giannis especially in a smaller market deserve to have their voice be heard right and the, the, from all of our understanding Adrian Griffin hired was because Giannis endorsed him to the max they interviewed a lot of different people and that was the guy that Giannis thought could put them over the hump and obviously <laughs> they thought they thought wrong but I'm sure there's a broader conversation about how much your star player should have in decisions like this that's all um who would have thought that Adrian Griffin would have been the first coach fired considering there are a lot of coaches around basketball that are underperforming, you know? Again, given the circumstances, you can argue that 30 or 13 is not good enough or the way they got to 30 or 13 was not good enough. Now, from the rumors, and this is from Woj and this is from Sham, so maybe not so much rumors, uh, Doc Rivers is at the top of the priority list for the Milwaukee Bucks. And anytime I see something like that, I'm just assuming that he's going to get the job. I just, it's hard to find a person on the street that could do the things that you want to do, and maybe they believe that Doc Rivers is that guy for them. Does that change their championship aspirations? I'm sure there's some people that were going to say no. Doc Rivers, over the course of his career, other than 2008, has been a subpar coach come playoff time. I mean, we're talking about the coach that has the most 3-1 leads blown as a head coach, you know? Um, but some people are going to say, hell, that's just, even with that, that's better than what we were experiencing with Adrian Griffin because I know Bucks fans in my personal life that if, again, they didn't think that he, would gonna, he was going to get fired on this random day in January, but they were saying that they don't believe that Adrian Griffin is the guy. Some of the ones that I've talked to said that they don't believe he was the guy this year, but maybe he can grow into that guy. And I guess ownership and the players in the locker room decided, we don't really have time to watch you grow into that guy. You know, it's 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 somewhat similar, but maybe not so similar to, to last year. We saw out of nowhere, Joe Mazzula had to be the coach because even you don't did some stuff and he made Yudoka had to get fired for it and um well Joe Mazzula took that assignment and and he came into a team that already established itself as one of the better teams in all of basketball and of course they didn't go on to win a championship they flamed out in the in the conference finals but the team decided we saw enough in in this this young coach to say we believe that he can be the guy to get us over the hump in in the next coming years and then they gave him an extension of course they traded for Porzingis they traded for for uh, Drew Holiday and so on and so forth but they saw this young coach on their coaching staff and because of some extreme circumstances put him as the head coach and he blossomed right first year head coaching is objectively hard especially when you're jumping into a team that have the aspirations to win a championship now if you look at recent history we've seen a, a decent amount of first year head coach going to win championships nick nurse came in with the Kawhi leonard year we saw uh steve kerr come in with the first year of the golden state warriors so we've seen first year head coach do this but they're few and far in between we think about just the grand scheme of nba history and and one of the most underrated things underappreciated things about building a culture and becoming a championship team and, and again that the bucks are a team that just did this a few years ago is finding the coach that the players, the organization, and everybody believes in. Mike Malone is that guy in Denver. Eric Spolstra has been that guy for, all, for like 20 years at this point. Obviously, Greg Popovich has been that guy for a very, very... Well, Greg Popovich is about 20-something years. And then I, I, I feel like Spolstra has been around for so long. I think it was like 2010. 2009 2006 so it hasn't been that long but he's a guy that's been through a lot of different ups and downs with his organization and never have we heard any rumors about exposure's name being on the chopping block finding the guy to be your guy for five plus years in current basketball is so very hard and maybe they thought that adrian griffin was going to be that guy but now they're opting to try to find accomplished experienced coaching and this is what adrian griffin is asking and um i'm sorry not adrian griffin uh adrian wojanowski is, is saying on twitter so of all the people that are available, that sounds like Doc Rivers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know who else you're really interviewing. Are you interviewing Mike D'Antoni? Oh, you thought the defense was bad. Wait till Mike D'Antoni get in town. So uh, I don't know exactly who that head coach is going to be. Um, but 
just this random Tuesday in January saw a coach get canned. A uh, part of me wants to go back through the timeline of who was available when Adrian Griffin signed on to be the head coach. Uh, because this was a this is one of the best coaching off seasons we had. We had like Nick Nurse, and again, I don't know when Nick Nurse or who signed first, but there were just a lot of really good coaches on the market this year, and they opted to go to Adrian Griffin. So I just need to go back throughout the history and see who signed where at what day. But I just remember it being like, oh my God, there's a lot. There's this coaching carousel is going to be kind of crazy this year. And again, they opted to the first year coach um, with his own coaching staff and stuff. So. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't I don't really know. You let me know what you think in the comment section. Joe Prudy, again, is the interim coach while they go through these interviewing processes. Joe Prudy has been an interim coach like four times or something, three to four times at this point. Um, and every single time, he coached okay-ish, I guess. Uh, so, yeah, you let me know what you think. Is Doc Rivers the right guy? Is there somebody else? Was this the right time to make Adrian Griffin um, out of the head coaching job? I don't know. I guess time will tell.